Hello, Paul is Best for UK here, and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be looking at the uh, new Commodore 64 full size by Retro Games Limited today in this video. I have looked in the past on the uh, Commodore 64 Mini, and now I've finally got one of these. So uh, let's have a look at this one. So I haven't opened it yet. So it's in mine's in this uh, clear. So, so I've got some scissors. Of course, it without damage in the box. Careful with scissors, of course. There we go. If it will slide out nicely. So yeah, here we are. Here's the uh, Commodore 64 full size. I'm looking forward to this, to be honest, because I did really like the uh, Mini. You can see on the back some nice artwork. Got the uh, Retro Games logo at the bottom, and it shows you a few of the games included. We're going posh. Ball missing, Power Droid, Idris Alpha, Udrium, Boulder Dash, Griduna. And this one actually supports both Vic 20 and Commodore 64 mode, which the uh, Mini did not. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to cut these seals off as well. You can see it's HDMI. Wow. Very nice presentation. I'll just fold up there in a minute. Okay, here we have the uh, the full size Commodore 64, and I, I do have to admit it looks very easily a bit of plastic. But that's one side. I do have to admit it looks very true to the original. There it is. Oh, it's got some weight to it as well. Those keys type on really well, actually. I like that. Shift lock doesn't lock down. Don't know if that's normal. I presume it is. <laughs> it's got the 664 as a Commodore key on this version. You got HDMI out, USB there, power in, which is USB Type B, which surprises me actually. Three USB ports, power button, and mine is serial number 00006003. I don't know if that's low or not, but yeah, that's mine. Very nice indeed. What else is in the box? Got a little box of goodies here. Let's have a look what's inside here. Oh, there's the joystick. Now on the Commodore 64 Mini, a lot of people had these that broke, but uh, mine never did. Mine's still intact. I've got it somewhere. Right, here's my uh, Commodore 64 Mini one, and the uh, it's uh, it's still intact. It's a bit dusty, actually. I don't know why. It's been under the it's been under the desk. Uh, yep. So here's my uh, new one. This one's actually a micro switch this time. The original wasn't. Very good. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that. There it is. 2019 retro games, of course. We can use this um, on the Mini as well, I presume. So that's that. We have got another box here. What's inside here, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. So we've got... Ooh. We've got a power plug. Let me just put that to one side. Have a look. So yeah, we got a power adapter. It says input AC 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz. Outputs 5 volts at 1,000 milliamps. There is also power cable or USB cable. And a HDMI lead. Now, it's, I'm not sure if it's, that won't fit in a UK plug socket, so I'm guessing you're gonna have to use some sort of adapter for that. But it doesn't matter because um, I've got plenty of 5 volt power adapters. I don't know if they're supposed to come with an adapt adapter or if you're supposed to source that yourself, but uh, yeah, it's the original Mini didn't uh, have an adapter power adapter at all so that's quite good 
We've got the uh, C64 Quick Guide. Mm. Protovision stated the art C64 game since 1996. Oh yeah, nice little manual. It's in the style of the original Commodore 64 manual. Looks like it with the lines and stuff, yeah. There it is. So yeah, so let's hook it, hook it up to my HDMI capture and we'll have a look at the system in action. Okay, now I've got the Commodore 64 full size or the, the, the C64 full size set up to my capture card. HDMI, so uh, let's have a look. So on first boot up, this is the first time I've ever plugged it in, so it's got the language selection. So I'm going to choose English because that's that's the language that I'm in. Uh, progress on. Now you've got a choice between 50HZ outside North America or 60HZ output in North America. So um, I'm in the 50HZ region, so it's going to do a video test for us. Press A to accept mode. Okay, so you press, that's okay, that's fine. Now, on this version, you got a choice between a carousel or the cl or classic basic. Uh, on the mini, that wasn't present, so let's have a look at the basic first of all. Press the little button on the, see on the bottom left, it tells you which button to press on the joystick to continue. And there we have it. There's the uh, classic uh, Commodore 64 basic that we all know and love. All in glorious HD. So, yeah. Shift and left Commodore key does the uh, little lower case, just like the past. Let's try typing in a little program. That's not really necessary, but <laughs> just a little rem statement. I'll change it to lowercase. There we go, so you can see that it's got a perfectly fine basic interpreter. So, let's have a look what some of these buttons do. So you've got media access in the middle and you've got options. So you can still get to the virtual uh, settings. You've got plenty of different options as well, like uh, Pixel Perfect CRT and stuff like that. Computer model. Okay, so you can choose, I didn't realise, well I did realise that you could choose between VIC-20 or Commodore 64, so let's try VIC-20. That's brought us into a VIC-20 mode, cool. I've never actually owned a VIC-20. There we go, VIC-20 mode. Hmm, okay. So yeah, that's pretty cool that like you can have VIC-20 mode as well. Uh, options, let's return back to uh, Commodore 64. Let's actually, let's go to the carousel. So easy carousel mode. So, uh, yeah. Turn the music off just in case I get any copyright claims. Okay, let's have a look. So you've got Cybernine Warrior, Cybernoid 2, Deflector, Destroyer, Everyone's a Wally, Fire Lord, Galincia Mini, Gateway to Asphy, Gribbly's Day Out, Greed Runner, Heartland, Herobotics, Highway Encounter, Hover Bother, Impossible Mission, Impossible Mission 2, IO, Idris Alpha, Jumpman, Mega Aclop Apocalypse, or I can't say that word. Mission AD, Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Neblus, Neverworld, Nodes of Yeesod, Paradroid, Pit Stop 2, Planet of Death. That looks like some sort of a basic written game, maybe. Uh, 
Psychedelia, that's Vic 20. Ranarama, Robin of the Wood, Silicon Warrior, Sky Crazy, Speedball 2, Spin Dizzy, Steel, Street Sports Baseball, Street Sport Basketball, Summer Games 2, Super Cycle, Sword of Fargo, Temple of Asphy Trilogy, The Ark of Yisod, and then you've got like a little Hall of Fame from the team. Thing bounces back, Thing on the Spring, Trailblazer, Udrium. Udiaz wins two, Winter Games, World Games, Zynaps, Alicat, Anarchy, Attack of the Mutant Camels. So yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of games on here. So uh, let's see, if we see how they uh, play on, on this. I'll tell you what, the Micro Switch joystick feels alright as well. Try Battle Valley. Bit of valley, Battle Valley, this is a game we had back in the day. It's on a magazine cover type. There it is. Battle Valley. You can hear the seed music in the background. It sounds really uh, promising. And uh, yeah. So it's good that we got the keyboard working there, so you can easily access the keyboard without having to plug in a USB keyboard like on the mini. That's really good. Really handy to have. So as you can see, yeah, there's Battle, Battle Valley on the uh, Commodore 64. Yeah, you get the idea with that. This is a game where you could be either the tank or the... If I can remember how to s turn around. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so that's Battle Valley. But any time you can save and load the state. Let's have a look at another one. We've got mm, quite a few games on here. Cybernoid 2, everyone's a Wally. Let's have a look at Monty on the Run. This is the one with the epic Sid music that everyone knows and loves. Oh, you fuck. It's one of the uh, less common Commodore 64 games where you add sound effects and music simultaneously. There's normally either a choice of music or sound effects. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I've never been any good at these type of games. I'm absolutely horrific at them. Oh, you booner. So yeah, that's uh, Munch on the Run. See, you see the music sounds good as well. See if I can get past these two. Oh, that was close. I'm terrible at these type of games, but they did make them pretty hard in the day as well. So, yep. Yeah. Just have a look at the uh, options again. Uh, I can choose between genre, author, and year. So what's this settings? Boot mode. Yeah, you can choose. You can actually choose which one you want to boot every time. As a your firmware information. Switch to classic mode, and uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some games on the USB pen and we'll see how that works with the media access folder. Okay, so now I've plugged in my USB pen with a few games on it. So uh, let's have a look if this works. I'm using a Toshiba 8 gigabyte one. Uh, let's have a look. So if we go to media access. Ah, there it is. So yeah. Okay, uh, I'm sure you want to see uh, this working on it. Uh, how do you load it? It's that one, isn't it? Right. You just choose a ROM and, uh, or D64 and load it. Look, here's that recent, uh, Commodore 64, uh, version of Super Mario 64, uh, homebrew port. Uh, let's have a look, see if that runs okay on here. I've got no reason to believe why it wouldn't. There it is. Let's 
I don't know. Well, I'm still impressed what they've done here, to be honest. It's a bloody impressive port. Yeah, so there you go. Let's exit out of that. Media access. What else have I put on here? So yeah, that's um, how you load the games. Got some demo scene on there as well. Let's try shoot, shoot em up construction kit, see if that works. Sometimes you do get these odd noises from the decompressing. What you would have done on the real Commodore 64. You can see the obligatory uh, pirate screen. How do you get out of this? There we go. And there you go, there's a shoot em up construction kit on the uh, Commodore 64 Maxi, or the Commodore 64 full size, should I say. I can't remember how to use this, it's been a long time. Well, yeah, you've got your full keyboard in front of you, so it's much more of a uh, usable uh, experience. Your game by your name. Well, as you can see, there's nothing happening at the moment. So, uh, media access. Now, I'm interested to know how... Let's, let's reset the computer again. How saving a game would work. So, let's try this. Turn it rem, Paul. 20, print, hello. Okay, so that's just a little test. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so it does it as if... Alright, let me try this then. Okay, so... Let's have a look now at the... The... Uh, the stick. Okay, there's nothing on the stick as far as I can see. So, uh, how do I get back out of this screen? Right, let's reset the computer. Let's do a directory of whatever's in there, if there's, if anything. No, that's not quite why I did mind. Oh, so it is saving it somewhere. Let's try a directory. I didn't do it right last time, did I? Yeah, okay, it's saving to... Is that saving to firmware? What I'm going to do is take my USB pen out. Reset the computer. Yeah, see if it's still there. Uh, Device not present ever. Put my USB stick back in. Device not present. Try again. Oh, maybe you have to reset the computer again after you put the USB stick back in. Device not present, ever. Is my USB stick still recognised? Yeah?
Okay, I'm not quite sure how that works, but um, I'll have to look into that more later today. I know you want to see some demo scenes, so let's try this video one. Yeah, it's that one, isn't it? You can see all the old decrunching and decompacting screens that you would have got on a real Commodore 64. And there you go, demo scene stuff. And you can change. So good for seed music. So there you go, yeah, the demo scene works great. Uh, let's come back. I've got f quite a fair few games on here. Yeah, I just want to see. So the possibilities are endless, so you can just add as much games as you want using a USB pen. Try a bit of Dizzy, see if that works. You can see it just automatically puts a disc in for you and then uh, the obligatory pirate screen again. That's the trouble with a lot of these D64 images, I've got pirate intros. You can see it decompacting. The Commodore 64 has a weird way of decompacting it, like shells off of its character set. Now I don't want infinite lives. A lot of these had trainers. And there you go, Dizzy by the Oliver Twins. Runs just like it would have done on the Commodore 64. One more thing I wanted to show you, if you didn't already know about this. If you go back, try a tape, like it's in the UK. Oh, okay. Is that working? I think it's working. Yeah, you can actually allow the tapes as a virtual cassette, so if you want to experience some of the uh, like ocean loaders and stuff, it will actually load a cassette as a, a virtual tape and you have to wait in real time just like you would on the real data set. Loading bar raster bars and everything. Rainbow Islands had one of them uh, ocean loaders, I think it was version 3 or version 2 of the ocean loader. You can see it's loading. I found that quite quite fun and neat that you can, if you want to experience what it was like in the UK to have uh, cassettes, you can do that as well without having to use discs like uh, on the disc drive. And there it is. The uh, Ocean Louder music running on the Commodore 64 modern version is a virtual cassette. Well, it's as old as that. 1990 this game came out. So yeah, there you go. And you can actually eject them. You can actually add uh, cartridges on it as well. 
that can eject all these slots. Don't know why it was in a cartridge, but uh, there you go. Uh, don't think you could do that on the mini. Try a bit of jet set, Willy, to round off the video. And there you go, Jet Set Willy on the Commodore 64. What a great little uh, machine this is. It's, it just brings back so many memories. I've actually still got a Commodore 64 bread bin today, but uh, it's so much more simpler to, and you don't have to worry about aging capacitors and aging power supplies and getting your data set out and everything because everything's all here. So it's a nice little modern solution to uh, experience ba basic programming, machine language programming for guests, and also games of the era. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look video of the uh, Commodore 64 full size. It's all new to me as well. It's the first time I've used it, so if there's been any mistakes in the video, that would be why. Uh, I'm a proud owner of this machine now, and uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day. So what do I think of the Commodore 64 full size or the D64 full size? I think it's great. I think it's got a brilliant keyboard that feels well and it's just a evolution of the Commodore 64 Mini and a great testament to the original Commodore 64. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.